Okay, to start out with from our secondary computer that we're not locked out of, boot into your Windows. From here, you need to go to this website. The link will be in the description as well. And we're gonna download the offline NT password and registry editor. Now, we're also gonna download a program called Rufus. Again, the link is in the description. So from there, click on boot disk. And I'm gonna be using a USB drive. Um, however, I don't recommend actually downloading USB and this zip file. Go ahead and click on CD140201 or whatever the latest version is after you watch this video. And from here, you'll download this file. And then you simply need to go into your downloads folder and extract that. You simply extract this file, just open it up and extract Oh, I'm using 7-zip, but whatever you have, or the basic one from Windows as well, and just extract the file. And then we are presented with this ISO file. From here, we'll go ahead and launch Rufus that we downloaded here. Now there's two versions of Rufus. I download the portable version and don't install it on the system. However, you can download that one and install it. Either one is sufficient. So with Rufus launched and both those downloaded, we'll go ahead and Plug in our USB drive, I already have, it's a four gig USB drive. And then we just simply select our image. So we'll go back to downloads, click on the CD image, open that up, and then just put pass reset. Start. Now you can label it anything you want. I just put that just as a reminder of what it is when I plug this drive in. All right, and it's finished. That whole process took about 30 seconds when I clicked start. So your mileage may vary a little depending on your system. So from here, we'll go ahead and hit close and reboot our system into this thumb drive. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it directly into my USB drive because sometimes it doesn't like to read when I do it from the hub. So let's go ahead and restart the system. Okay, from this screen, from this screen, we're actually gonna have all these other options. You can choose any of these, like no USB and the other ones, but I'm just gonna hit enter, just with nothing in the boot, and it'll automatically boot into uh, using the default settings. So from the base portion here, you should see your Windows installation pull up. Now note, you can't just use a VM and use this utility. This utility only usually works on bare metal hardware. So when it first boots into here, you just should see your Windows install. If you don't see your Windows install or you get an error message, you try, might try one of those other options that was listed during the startup. However, from there, you do see SDA2 and it shows the Windows system directory. We're gonna go ahead and hit one and enter. So from here, it should pull in all our, let's see all our actual uh, password resets. So this lists all the files, which you're probably gonna not understand any of this garbly gook. So just hit one for password reset. There's other things in here like recover console parameters and other things that you probably shouldn't mess around with. So with that, let's go ahead and hit one and enter. And we're gonna edit user data and password. So we we'll are also hit one and enter. And you'll see that uh, we have a couple things here. We have uh, Titus, we also have Administrator. Um, there's a couple other things here. Now, if we type in 01F4 for local admin, we can actually kind of check on that local admin account. And you'll see that it is disabled, which most local admin accounts are disabled. It actually defaulted to my user. Um, but for this video, I'm gonna actually enable this account and then we're going to log in as the local admin giving us complete privilege to do whatever we want on this windows mint box so with that let's go ahead and choose number two for unlock and enable user account and then we don't know the password so let's also clear the password with one and enter so from here we can go ahead and hit q for quit editing the user so if we go back into uh, the one 
edit user data and passwords, you'll notice that uh, administrator now doesn't show dis-lock. The dis-lock means disabled or locked, meaning you can't use it. Um, it says blank. It means we blanked out that password. It is an admin and it is enabled now. So with all this, uh, we can actually just hit Q to go back and then Q again to quit. And then it says, hey, hives have changed. What do you want to do? And we're going to go ahead and write this file. This is about to write file back. Do it. Its default option is in for no. We need this to be yes. Is by writing this, we will unlock that account and blank out that password. So with this done, we will say no for new run. And now it says control alt delete, or you can run the SH script to manually enable a reboot. I'm going to just hit control alt delete and we'll see what we get on our reboot. Also, don't forget to eject your USB drive if you have it in to reset the password. Okay, so we have a couple options here. So our default user Titus still exists. We now have administrator down here. So let's go down to administrator and click on that. You'll notice it pulls it right in because we blanked out the user. It actually enabled it. And since this user's never been used, it says it's getting it ready for us. So this is a local admin account that didn't exist that was disabled that it basically enabled and allowed us to go ahead and create a fresh admin account to do whatever we need to on this PC to get it back in functional order. Um, this is a preferred method, especially if I suspect it to be like a virus or anything like that. Uh, this will really, really help because a fresh profile is less likely to get infected on boot and you'll have a greater chance of actually cleaning this PC. Obviously by doing it in safe mode, by simply just going to the start menu, holding shift, hitting the power button, and then restart. That would be one way of actually getting into safe mode. Um, and then you can also use the local admin account instead of your user admin to clean the PC. Uh, I like this approach. And then once you're done, you can disable this account or simply delete it if you if you like. Now, this, this admin account, I do believe you do have to disable because it is the administrator, the built-in administrator account. Now, from here, uh, we're back in the system. Um, let's go ahead and log off and see if we can't disable this account again. So we're gonna sign out and we're gonna go over to my user that actually has a password. Okay, so with us back in our normal user account, we needed to disable that local admin because having a blank admin on your system's obviously a security problem. Uh, much less you just don't want to be looking at it. So let's go ahead and we can't remove that account because it's the local administrator. So we'll right click down here and then simply go into computer management. From here, we can go local users and then users. And then where it says administrator, we can go ahead and right click it and then set properties. And then we just go account is disabled, apply, okay. This disables this account so you can't log into it and let's go ahead and give it a reboot just to see what we get on our start screen this time around. Okay from our start screen we're going to go ahead and click it and you'll see the administrator account is no longer listed we can't just click on it to log in and all we have is our user as it should be. So now we can just simply log in Everything is right with the world. Now that you fix your computer, you're able to log back in. Now, obviously, enabling the local admin was a little more complex on this actual setup. I just wanted to show that because that's the best way should you get locked out and you have like viruses or something to get back in. However, by choosing your actual username and just resetting it, all you're doing is uh, blanking out that password. So you can use these processes simply on your user account and not have to go through the local admin enabling, disabling. Uh, I just wanted to show that aspect of it is how I fix many computers um, by using a fresh admin account to go ahead and clean up, uh, especially since when you log in your profile, certain files are used that could be infected. 
there you have it that is the reset password tool in windows i've done this so many times and i see other people like mention uh shareware products or products that charge money to reset these passwords and that's just silly this is a, a freeware product that has been around for ages there's no reason to pay for uh, a password reset i think that's just uh, silly and should never happen just follow these steps step by step be sure to pause and parts if you have issues with it again almost every time I've seen someone complain about this tool not working it's one just not paying attention and if you look through this video again you'll notice in those brackets it actually gives you the default options and most times those default options are either your user account yes or no and you just kind of follow through it's very intuitive when you think about it it's just most people are intimidated by the command line interface that they see on the screen but get past that it's really a very simplistic tool and one that you can really use to to help save you know and save yourself and, and get back into your version of windows but with all that said let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below and a big shout out to my patrons without you i couldn't make videos like this one and if you haven't already be sure and ring the bell so you get notified when i make new videos and i'll see you in the next one